Today on Ask This Old House. There are a ton of different masonry trowels out there. I'll tell you which does what. This one's from London. Where's this guy from? That guy is a Philadelphia. Oh, seriously? But, seriously. Kidding, no. And look at this. You, you can see that's very hard steel. Yeah. Carbon steel. Okay. Bang. If I ever have to make a cut in place. You could do a few trowel. Yeah. The Philly boy's got an edge. Yeah. Nice looking picture. Thank you. We love it. Uh, but the warning label here said that for houses built before 1985 that there's a risk of fire. If you have an old house and want a new light, it may not be an easy swap. And this storage shelf can hold all of your tools and the parts to go with them. And I'll show you how to build it. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to a brand new episode of Ask This Old House. We have got a lot coming your way today. We're going to be dealing with masonry, electrical and carpentry. Tommy Silva's got to build it, but first, Nathan, you have got some sanding to do. That's a new kit. Look at you, new yeah. toys. What yeah. the heck is that? Pretty exciting, something I picked up online for 50 bucks. It's actually targeted more for guys who do automotive body work. Oh, so these are profiles for like sandy blocks? Exactly, 20 different profiles and you get a grip yeah. with it. You can put hook and loop sandpaper on it, but it's going to be great for sanding crown molding or d intricate profiles. All right, so well, that one doesn't quite fit in there, but with 20 of them, you're going to find something that fits in there. Exactly, concave, convex, yeah. makes it easy to hand sand. Well, that is a perfect fit in there, right? Yeah, it's going to give nice, even pressure when you're sanding. That is great. All right, so I love it, but why not just, I mean, take a piece of sandpaper, fold it up, and a little bit of that. Well, when you hand sand, you, you really can't deliver that equal pressure along the whole way. You're going to kind of hit some high, high points and roll over some edges, so it's nice to have the right profile. I always carry this little flat one with me, and it's great. But you can see when I push it, I can get a lot of leverage on it mm -hmm. and get a nice, even sand. If I try to fold this over in my hand and do it, I'm just going to get yeah. just a pressure point right down the middle. So you're going to get some uneven sanding right there. And exactly. certainly that's going to be exacerbated when you're trying to get into a profile like this. Mm -hmm. And then this guy, well, that's going to hit that perfectly as well. Yeah, it's a nice kit, so I'm, uh, I'm excited to uh, bring it to the job site. So. You. What's the deal? You've got different profiles and a handle that they attach to? Exactly, yeah. So I can pop this one out, cut some hook and loop, apply it to the back, yep. snap it in, it in go to work. Go. So I guess the final question is, does Tommy know you have it? Because if he doesn't, you better hold on to it and hide it. I'll, I'll keep it close. All right, man. Thank you. Yep. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Hey Heath. Hi Brendan. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Come on in. So what are we looking at today? So the light that I emailed you about is actually right here. Okay. So we've been in this house for about three years. I'm pretty handy, uh, so I thought I'd replace this light fixture. We bought a light to replace it, and there's a warning label that I really wanted to have some look at before we put it in. Sure. Let's take a look at the fixture. So this is the fixture that we bought right here. All right. Oil red bronze finish, the clear glass, the Edison style LED lamps. Nice looking fixture. Thank you. We love it. Uh, but the warning label here said that for houses built before 1985 that there's a risk of fire. This house was built in 1960. Ah, got it. So what we'll do is we'll start by taking the existing fixture down. We'll take a look and see what you have for wiring up there. But first, we'll go downstairs and you can show me where the panel is so we can turn the power off. Great. Follow me.
All right, so we've taken the light fixture down. Okay. And what we found in the junction box was pretty much what you expect to find in a house of this age. It has this kind of cloth covered NM cable and the conductors inside are rated 60 degrees Celsius or about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. The drawback to this is when you'd have a fixture that would take an incandescent bulb, people would often put a lamp in that the fixture wasn't rated for, something much higher that could generate a lot more heat. What would happen is because this only had a lower temperature rating, it would actually heat up over time. It could get brittle, it could crack, it could separate and fall off. Worst case scenario though, it could actually arc and cause a fire. And that's the last thing we want to have happen. Right. So in the early 80s, they actually changed the code to make the temperature rating of these wires higher. Okay. And what they've done is they've required the insulation on this jacket to be rated 90 degrees C, or almost 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 194 degrees. It takes a lot more temperature and gives you a lot more selection as far as putting up fixtures and installing different types of lamps. So does it matter that these are LED bulbs? They're not going to get that hot, right? No, the bonus is those really won't generate any kind of heat, but the only drawback is because of the type of socket it is, it still takes a standard bulb that you'd normally get anywhere, and there's still the potential for someone to put in something they shouldn't, something that's way too strong okay. that still could overheat. So what we can do to solve this issue is we can splice a piece of wire, pull the existing wiring back, add a new piece of the newer wire, mm -hmm. about 18 to 24 inches long, put that in the junction box, and that'll let us install the new light fixture you picked out. Awesome. All right, we're gonna start by getting these old wires out of the way. And we have a little crawl space above us, and we're just going to push these up into that crawl space. All right. So what we have here, Brendan, is we have the wires that we pushed up from the light fixture downstairs. Yep. The problem we run into is they go in different directions, so they don't quite reach one junction box like we hoped they would. Okay. It's okay. We can fix that. What we're going to do is put one wire into this first box, bring these two wires into the second box, put a jumper between, and then we'll run the new wire down to the fixture where it was before. Sounds good. All right, so here's the wire we pushed down from the attic. Okay. This is our new one, and now we're gonna install the new box. So next we're going to strip the jacket. All right. And now we'll slide the wire through the cable connector. Okay. And then we'll slide the box up. Now we'll put the ground screw in. Now we're going to go around that ground screw on the fixture bar as well. Is there a reason why you're putting in a second ground screw? In this case, where the box is metal and the box is already bonded, the fixture bar is attached with metal screws. That's usually sufficient. But in case the box was plastic, you definitely want to attach to this. And it's just a habit we've always had and a good little extra practice to do. We're ready for the fixture. All right, here you go. Let's install the light bulbs. All right. And now the glass. It'll sit like so, and then we'll take the ring. All right, the power's back on. Let's give it a try. Looks great. Yeah, it's a great looking fixture. And I feel really good knowing that it's safe. Glad we could help. Awesome. Thank you very much, Heath. Really appreciate it. Nice job, Heath. Although, nice. I've got a question for you. 
what is the 18 inches by you? I mean, if you're still pulling too much power, what do you guys call it? Amperage. If you're still yeah. pulling too much amperage over a wire, couldn't it heat up anywhere along that run? It could, but the amperage actually isn't our concern and what we're trying to solve here. The issue with this is lamp issue and heat from the lamps and potential of overlamping. That's where we get the heat problem. Wait, so it's because the bulbs are close to that junction box? That's what's causing it? Exactly, because this is sitting right on the junction box and you have the heat source directly against it. It can actually heat up inside that junction box, make the insulation on the conductors ah, brittle, and has a breakdown. Gotcha. So if the bulbs were farther away, we wouldn't necessarily have the problem. Like a chandelier. If we had a chandelier where the bulb source, or the bulb was actually lower, heat source is away from the canopy, not as much of an issue. And you might not see the label at all. And they may not have a tag on it. All right. So uh, when you open up that box and you see the wire, mm -hmm. you know what's right and wrong. Right. How do I tell whether it's the right wire or not? So the first thing to take a look at is this one is obviously old. So we know right away there's no chance of that being rated for today's fixtures. And that's because of this, this sheeting Because of the here. jacket and the way it's wrapped. Yeah, you can yeah. tell right off the bat. So this one is never good in, in this situation. Not for this application. Okay. Yeah. Then they changed to this. Sometime in the 70s, we'll see something like this. Mm -hmm. Non-metallic sheath cable, type mm -hmm. NM. Right. And it says that? It does say that right on it, type NM. Right. But it's still only rated 60 degrees Celsius, same as the right. other one. But in 1984, we went to this one. Well, how do you tell the difference between these two? Because they look a lot alike. And the difference between these two is the NM versus the NMB. NMB, 90 degrees Celsius. A and the B is just like... Second generation, essential. Second generation, okay. So if you pull it out and you don't see NMB. You know that it's not good for this application, that right. it's 60 degrees C conductors inside there. And then any wires we buy today are going to be rated for the. We'll have that B on there and it shouldn't be an issue. Cool, great information. Thank right. you. Thanks. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Hey, Mark. Hey, Kevin. Looks like you just robbed a trowel store. What is going on here? Well, you know, you need the right tool for the right job, and that's why we have a lot of tools. Boy, do you ever. All right, you going to walk me through them? I'll walk you through them. Okay, so... Big boys. This, these are the big boys. These guys are built for production. So when we have brick going into a wall, these are the trowels that we're going to use. This one here, it's a little bit smaller than that one, but that's called a London-style trowel. Really? Yeah, and cool. that's what we lay brick with. Uh -huh. But the other one, you can see it's much bigger. It's got a bigger heel, and that's going to allow us to grab more mortar, which is why we call it a block trowel. Yep. As you can see, I got 16 inches uh, on the block that I have to spread mortar on. Bigger trowel. Gotcha. I get. Yeah. This one's from London. Where's this guy from? That guy is a Philadelphia trowel. <laughs> seriously? But, seriously. Just kidding. I was and look at this. You, you can see that's very hard steel. Yeah. Carbon steel. Bang. If I ever have to make a cut in place, you could do it with your trowel. Yeah. The Philly boy's got an edge. Yeah. Okay. Tough so guy. London and Philly. Uh, the smaller guys? So the smaller guys, these two trowels really are built for speed. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get a mason to come to your house to do a little bit of repair work, you're going to look into his bag and you're going to find an array of trowels. Mason is literally different than a bricklayer? Uh, it really is. A mason is the guy that's going to come and do repair work. And again, he's going to do the smaller jobs, pour a little concrete walkway. Generalist. A bricklayer. Yeah. yeah, he's a generalist. But a bricklayer is a guy that's built for speed and all he wants to do is make the the wall red. That's it. What, what's uh, this guy here? So that is a pointing trowel and we're going to use that for just small spaces. So if I have to extract a brick out of a wall because it's cracked or chipped, yep. I'm going to cut it out, but I'm going to have to get in there with a smaller trowel. A little bigger, a little rounder. What's this guy? Okay, that's a gauging trowel and again that round edge right there is going to help me get around pipes and tight areas. Get around literally anything you want. And then right. these guys? These two are margin trowels. You can see they're slightly different, but again, this margin trowel is going to let me get into a tighter spot than, say, this one is. But we like margin trowels because I can, I can dip into a bucket and get my mortar. I can scrape, uh, 
put it into a crack mm -hmm. two, three inches thick, and then I can drag this trowel down to give myself a smooth, oh. smooth edge on the way out. It's going to be a big bag. Yeah. All right. Um, and so these guys over here? So these are specifically for plaster or cement. They're finishing trowels, and again, they come in an array of different sizes and different shapes. So finishing trowels, I mean, you can sort of see why. Big you, surface area. These are ones that you're going to be sort of spreading or smoothing? That's right. You can get that particular trowel all the way up to 22 inches, right. four or five inches wide. So this has got square bottom, square top. This has got right. rounded bottom, rounded top. Right, so different application. This is going to be used for a pool. Oh, swimming yeah. pool. Swimming pool. Smooth edges and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's oh, right. And you have cool. to get to tight corners with that. All right, and then this guy next to you? This guy right here, again, it's just a, it's the same type of margin trowel, if you will, but it's a finishing trowel, and again, longer shaft, longer handle is going to allow me to get into a deeper spot than I normally would be able to with that trowel. And would you use both sides, square side and rounded side? And again, if I had a pipe that I had to get around and I needed to do it on my backhand, that edge is going to allow me to do it. All right. And then the other one? So this one here is what we call a duck bill trowel. Love that. Right? Of Looks course. like a duck bill, sure. Yeah. And again, it's just going to allow me to get to places that I normally wouldn't be able to get into. And then finally, so finally, this is my mag float. It's, uh, it's mag being what? Magnesium, I'm sorry, oh, magnesium. Okay, yeah. yeah. So what I do when, after I screed my concrete like I already did here. So this is, this is still wet. Still a little wet, but you can see you've got some marks and mm -hmm. other things that are in the cement. So if I start to work my tool. So what? So magnesium is a good surface because it's going to be what tough and nothing's going to stick to it. Well, what the magnesium is again, it's going to allow me to float, and what it does is it actually brings up the cream, which is the water that's in the cement. So it's going to allow me to fill in divots. It's going to allow me to knock down some high spots. But if I do it in a circular motion, like this, you can see that everything. There it is comes. starting to level off, and I'm starting to bring the cream up. Yeah. Starts to glisten and get wet. Yep. And you just have to work it. Now that is a magnesium finish right there. Some people will actually leave that because they're, it's skid resistant. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing a basement floor, you're going to let this set up for a little bit and then you're going to grab your finish trowel and all that stuff goes away. Oh, and there's a real smooth. There's a real smooth. We'll let that set up for a little bit. We'll come back with the finish trowel and all that will go away and we'll have a glass finish. Beautiful. All right, Mark. Thank you very much. All right, Kevin. Appreciate it. Thank you. May I? Yep, yeah, please. So, Tommy, we've got a uh, build it on tap for today. What'd you do? Upgrade the tool collection? <laughs> well, you know, I bought a kit. It comes with just about everything. But a lot of people have those kits, and they work around the house. They take a whole bag, and they mm -hmm. do a project here and there. It's stuffed in the garage. You know what? I thought it would be nice if we built the cabinet. We could take them out of that bag and store them on a nice shelf, probably maybe three or four feet wide, right. maybe three or four feet high, and put some compartments in it to separate everything. Not a bad idea. We don't always work on the job site. A lot of people work just out of the garage. Exactly. I recognize this, made that old record cabinet out of yeah. this oak uh, plywood. Yeah, and you know what? I'm thinking we get a lot of material around left over from projects that we've done over the years. I've got some pine, I've got some small sheets of plywood, and this one. Why not cut it up and make that cabinet out of this stuff? Doesn't have to be fancy for a garage storage. Right. All right. All right. Let's get started by making a couple of strips out of this sheet. The cabinet's going to be four feet wide, three feet tall, and one foot deep. So that's what I'll cut the plywood down to. All right, I'm going to roughly hold these pieces together, and I'll be standing right here at the top. Mm -hmm. We have our two sides, and the piece of scrap that we had out of pine, that will be one of the dividers. Now, I want to be able to make some shelves in here, configure them a little bit different. All right. And I also want to be able to hang the power tools down at the bottom on some fingers. Off of like this? Right. They'll slide right down in there. Now you can go that way, or they can go upside down. It doesn't matter. We'll just make some fingers there. And by fingers, you mean what? You're going to cut some of this out? Yep. We'll cut it out, and you slide the tool down in between the fingers. Cool. All right. Let's get that laid out so we can cut them. All right. We've got everything lined up, and we're ready to drill our holes. Now the first thing we did is we put a sacrificial board underneath the finished shelf so when we drill through it, we don't blow out the grain underneath. 
I've also placed this board right here so we center all of our holes or have them in the right position from this edge all the way down. And we'll just place our drill against that board like that and drill our hole and every one will be lined up. And that Forstner bit's going to give us a rounded back to the finger? Right. And once we cut the round holes, then we'll position off the outside diameter of the holes a straight line out, and that will create our finger. Smart. Now we want to remove this piece right here and that will create the slot. But I want to do one more thing first. I want to make the outside of each one of these fingers round. And to do that, I'm going to use a cup. Place the cup on the line. Draw it around like that. it all the way down. It'll hold our tools like that, or we want, we can hold them like that. Nice. Now let's cut the shelves down to size. Okay, last shelf cut the length. Yep. All right. All right, let me show you what I think we have. We have our fingers here for our tools to slide into. Narrow space, which gives us a shelf right here so we can put all of our batteries on here. And we'll get another narrow shelf so our reciprocating saw will fit in there. Mm -hmm. A shelf up here so you can put like trash bags or whatever else you have. Right, and then I see a circular saw grinder down here on the bottom shelf. Yep, yeah. And then in here you've got the uh, jigsaw. Yeah, so we can put some power tools there, maybe a nail gun, whatever we have. We'll make some dividers out of some quarter inch plywood to put in there. So we'll date the top of this shelf oh. and the bottom of that shelf so the dividers will slide in place. Okay. I'm gonna data one side of two shelves at the same time to ensure the dados line up perfectly. This jig will hold the two pieces in place and keep the spacing even as I cut. With everything cut, we'll assemble the cabinet. Since it's just going in the garage, simple butt joints will do the trick. All right, I want to flip it over, we get the back on. All right, now we got two pieces of half inch. I like it, Tommy. I like the look a lot. Yeah, now everything is organized. You know what you have. So if you notice with these dividers, I pulled out one so we could get a wider router in there, but you can always put it back to make the space narrow again. Easy to grab the uh, screw guns, impact drivers, no problem. Your batteries, Oops. skating saw, trash bags, whatever you need, Love whatever it. you want to put on there. Nice job. Thanks. Thanks for your help. Ten more and we'll have enough storage for the rest of your tools. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.